You ever get the feeling that everything in America is completely fucked up? You know that feeling that the whole country is like one inch away from saying, that's it, forget it. Alrighty. Hey guys, I know it's been about two or three days since I last did a video, and I'm sorry about not getting live streams out on the backup channel, which is Fringe Files 2, if some of you guys don't know. But I'm trying to get more content up again on this main channel, since hopefully in a couple of days we'll be able to go live again. We'll see. It all depends on how YouTube is feeling, right? Um, so get ready for that, because hopefully, you know, once we can go live again, I'll be trying to do my live streams every night. Um... And if that fails, then go ahead and subscribe to Fringe Files 2. If that just doesn't fall through, then we'll be over there and be going live over there. But I hope you understand why I'm just trying to get content out over here. Um, I want to thank the subscribers that came over from the David Knight Show. Thank you guys. Uh, I'll probably piss some of you off, so I, I do expect that number to drop a little bit. And uh, let's see here. I haven't talked to Croco. I think eventually we'll be doing our stream about the social dilemma. We'll just have to kind of play it by ear. He's been pretty busy and had a lot of collabs going on his way, so I don't mind being kind of patient and sitting on the back burner with that. Uh, I've been talking to Brian from High Impact TV, so we'll see if we can set up something over there. I know that he's also a very busy guy, and it's totally understandable when people with, you know, 100,000 subscribers or 50,000 subscribers, obviously they go first. So I'll just be patient on what's going on over there, but if you don't follow him for whatever reason, go over there and subscribe to High Impact TV. And I haven't reached out yet, but I think that whenever I can go live again, we'll see, that all depends on YouTube. I think that I'll try to get Prescott Caliber Club to come on the show and talk to us a little bit about what the ATF is doing. I have a feeling that he's got a lot more knowledge on it than I do. Um, I know that his business even kind of it could be affected by some of the things that are going on. So I kind of want to get his opinion on what's the next step since they've gone rogue. And I actually have an article about that to go over today. So now that I've got all of that out of the way, um, hit the thumbs up if you decide you like this content. That sounds just so bad. But please, please do. Because I think that it helps. And if I can get on the halfway good side of YouTube again, I do want to keep the channel growing as long as they'll allow me to do so. And... If YouTube fails completely, remember there's always DLive, guys. So, now that I have all of that out of the way, we've got one more thing to get out of the way. If you feel the need to have some gold or silver, which personally I do because I don't know the kinds of things that are going to be coming our way. Um, I do have food, I do have water, I live off grid. You know, I'm trying the best that I can, but another way that I like to diversify myself is to have a little bit of silver. Um, I'm not very big on the gold side. I have a couple of, you know, little tiny gram pieces. That's about all my budget can afford. If you can go bigger, then go ahead. But personally, I love silver because it has more upside potential to it. And yes, the banks do suppress that, but they do that for a reason. There will be a run up on this when they need to pay off some big debts, which we know we have a lot of. So if you do feel the need for that gold or silver, check out Wise Wolf Gold and Silver Exchange. Everything is in the description below. And what's great about that is it's veteran owned. It's a one man show. Tony does all of that himself and he uses the funds to keep himself on the air. I also want to thank Tony for inviting me on to the David Knight show. Um, we did a special little segment just on gold and silver. So if that's something that you're interested in, just check it out. And now we can move along. <laughs> so uh, Christmas is canceled, according to Fauci. Just just according to Fauci. Um what are your guys' Christmas plans? Are you going to not go in Thanksgiving as well? Are you not going to go because political reasons and you don't want to be the black sheep and maybe stir the pot? Are you going to go and everybody's going to be maskless? Are you going to have a weird Thanksgiving or Christmas where everyone is wearing a mask and pulling the mask up and down as they're going to eat their food? I would really like to know how you think that's going to go. I'm, I'm not even positive for myself. Uh, one side of my family, I don't think that we care to go to their Thanksgiving at all. And the other side, which I'm not going to say who's who, the other side of the family, we might do it, but it just depends. And again, I feel like some political BS could get brought up and I just don't know if I want to deal with it personally. So uh, let's hear a little bit of what Fauci has to say. I'm not sure how loud this is going to be for you guys. Happening. We've got to get the vaccine. It's got to be deployed and we can't abandon 
fundamental public. You know what I hate? Like, I, I get the idea that the mandatory vax is coming, whether it be from government or companies. We'll have to see. I, what is it right here? Deployed? Can't abandon fundamental public health measures. I just don't like how they always say deploy. Because you know what you deploy to, right? Yeah, that gives me the idea that the military will set up shop somewhere and you're supposed to be there. And don't forget your Kovi bracelet or your app or your pass, your health pass, whatever it might be. I just hate the idea of what's going on here. You can approach a degree of normality while still doing some fundamental public health things that synergize with the vaccine. We could have normality. And I'm, I'm not talking about the, the bits and pieces of tyrannical government that we have. Those aren't the people that you should necessarily be scared of. It's all the people that are complying with them. We could have normalcy if people would wake up, right? Most people have seen or they have it in their head that you've got a 99.8% chance of survival. You know what that tells me? I'm not concerned about it. I'm not going to shut my life down over it. I'm not going to wear a mask over it. Just a bit of personal stuff going on. Today, whenever I walked into my grocery store, everyone was masked up. That's not normal for here. All of the people from out of town are gone. All the leaf lookers. It's it's not very nice weather anymore. There's not a lot going on for people to be in the area. So these are all of my local people that live here. They're masked up. A woman was screaming at her child while I was trying to check out because he was touching a magazine, um looking at candy, things like that, all, all the last minute buys that they want you to get, it's all that stuff, right? Well, she's screaming at her kid through the mask, which the little kid's not wearing a mask, and I'm, I mean, thank goodness, but at the same time, it's like, why are you wearing one and he's not? It just doesn't make any sense. Well, she's like, stop touching things, stop touching, all these people's germs, you've got all these germs, like, germs, 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 and I'm thinking, this is good for kids. Why do we not let kids play in the dirt or touch things anymore? Everybody freaks out the moment a baby puts something in its- Now, if it's small enough to choke on, yes, remove that item. But these are all normal things for kids, and they don't have a, a broad understanding of what's going on. Right? I can understand if we were in, like, something severe, but we're not. We're literally talking about the common cold, and you're scared that your kid is touching a magazine. I almost said something but i didn't i just i wanted to go along with my normal day uh i i did give her a, a nice glare but that was about it and she calmed it. apparently that glare was enough because she got quiet very quickly i think that she noticed she was maybe embarrassing herself so you know kids are gonna do what kids do you can't really help that to get us back to normal so not until the second or third quarter of 2021 though christmas is probably not gonna be possible I, I i i i can't tell you about the christmas it's not normal yeah i'm yeah. well happening that's so fantastic just one more time probably not gonna be possible yeah i'm well happening god i can't stand that so that's what we're gonna start off with and now we're jumping over this right here noble un food agency warns 2021 will be worse than 2020 so if 2020 hasn't been a shit show already it's gonna get worse so the head of the world food program <sighs> these jobs says the nobel priest peace prize has given the un agency a spotlight like they didn't already have one and megaphone to warn world leaders that next year is going to be worse than this year. And without billions of dollars, we are going to have famine of biblical proportions in 2021. Now, a lot of us have known for years that this could be a possibility. Biblical proportions, yes, of famine. That's understandable. The way that we do things today, that, that's not how nature works. That's not how society should work. And it could all come to a crash. We also work on a three-day system. All right, which means that you need to be ready if there's a kink in that system. And it could be a kink that only lasts a couple days. It could be a kink that lasts a couple months. If all of this really comes barreling down, uh, I mean, I'm not ready for that. But I guess those of you that are ready for a couple of years, more to you, right? What I find interesting about this is without billions of dollars. So we could fix this with money. 
What they're saying is we could fix this. Hey, Federal Reserve, if you want to print some more cash, we might need it. Hey, big brother that goes and watches the world, we need your help, right? This sounds like an issue that's going to come on to us. Or China, I guess Russia could come into play as well. But apparently this, this could be solved if we just have billions, maybe even trillions, depending on how bad it gets, going into this crisis. You know what's interesting about this is if it was really that big of a deal, it it wouldn't, the money wouldn't matter. So, I don't know, I just find that to be a little bit interesting, that with more money we can avoid this. Isn't that what people always say? And can they? Can they truly avoid it? Or is it going to be FEMA level? Like, we, we, could, get, we could skirt by, but... You're only allowed to have what FEMA designates to you for that day or for that week. That's a possibility. <sighs> so, David Beasley said in an interview with the Associated Press that the Norwegian Nobel, Nobel Committee... What is wrong with my words? Nobel Committee was looking at the work the agency does every day in conflicts, disasters, and refugee camps, often putting staffers' lives at risk to feed millions of hungry people, but also to send a message to the world that it's getting worse out there and that our hardest work is yet to come. Get ready for that. Parts of the U.S. You know, it looks okay now because people still have their nice clothes and they have a nice car that they probably can't afford and they live in a nice home that's far above their means. Things look okay for now. I don't know how well things are going to be looking in the next couple years or even into 2021. I can't say. But you need to get ready for parts of the U.S. or even the entire U.S. to start looking like a third world country. That's the direction that we're going in. Remember that really dark winter is upon us. That'll be the last article that I read to you. This one I found to be a bit interesting because a lot of us were having trouble finding certain caliber sizes out there. What I didn't realize is that it was actually affecting deer hunting season or just hunting season all around. So what would, you know, there's kind of different calibers out there. And nowadays, because everything is technology is amazing and guns just get more fun over time these things kind of merge together um but there's generally what would be known as defensive calibers and then there's your, your hunting calibers um but like i just said the way that guns are made nowadays or what you could put together yourself it's all kind of merged you can almost do it's very creative so national ammunition shortage could affect deer hunting season Interesting. So starting this weekend, hunters will be in deer stands looking for trophy deer. The only problem, they may not be able to find any ammo. Doug Rude was an avid hunter in his youth, but he wasn't just looking for trophies. It's not a sport where we're going out to kill things just for killing. We actually enjoy the wild game, we have wild game recipes, and we really like to eat what we kill. Uh, speaking of, on the county road today, we got hung up by a bunch of turkeys. <laughs> He's getting a little older now, so he leaves the sport to his grandkids and nephews. They hunt all types of things, from squirrels to ducks and deer to geese, uh, to every little bit of thing. The challenge this year is hunting down ammo, and I know that many of you guys have had the same issue, and it seems to be kind of coming in fluctuations, right? In some areas, you can't find any at all, and then finally there's some on the shelves, and then somewhere else doesn't have any. So it's kind of like this big bidding game right now, and... My main concern, is this purposeful? Do we actually have everything that we would need to be able to get the ammo out to people? Or are they purposely slowing things down? I'll let that be left up to you. Now, with this, I want to slide into this article here. Surpri I know my head has been in the sand, but surprisingly, I only know about this because of Davy Krakow, some guy out of New York, which is crazy because I think that the... I can't be positive, but I think that the kind of restrictions that they have, there's a lot more than in a state like mine, such as Arkansas. Check this out. The AT and this is happening under Trump, by the way. The ATF has become a rogue agency. I think that they've always been a rogue agency because if you want to grow, sell tobacco, um, same with alcohol. I mean, I, I live around some moonshiners. I don't think that all of them totally follow the guidelines, but I don't have any problem with that. And firearms. Um, 
they've been rogue for it's it's a division that we really don't need if you asked me but the rogue agency that turns lawful gun owners into felons over and over again innocent people unwittingly find themselves in the atf's crosshairs this is just wow it's happening under trump right but it lets me know that it could go way further if Biden was in office. But just knowing that this is happening under Trump, I don't know, guys. It could go further even if he was to be reselected. Not elected, but reselected. So what if government agencies could, by declaration, declaration, make you into a criminal? What if, without legislative challenge, bureaucrats could decide that what was legal yesterday is a felony today? What if we were governed not by law? but by our arbitrary statements telling us what we may or may not do. Unfortunately, those questions are not merely hypothetical thanks to recent abuses of power by the ATF. Millions of American gun owners are facing them head on. Even if you hate guns, you should deeply be concerned by uh, the power wielded by the ATF against your fellow Americans. If an unchecked executive agency can run roughshod over any of our rights without impunity, all of our rights are in danger. So this has to do with the SBR, short barreled rifles, guys. Recently, the firearms manufacturer QLLC shared disturbing news with its customers. The ATF has declared the delightfully named and popular Honey Badger pistol, um, that's a SVR. This determination subjects the firearm to special restrictions under the National Firearms Act. As consequence of the ATF's decision, customers who had purchased the Honey Badger have suddenly found themselves in felonious possessions of now illegal firearms that they had legally acquired and legally owned. The ATF's detrimation is ar arbitrary. I Guys, this word will never come out of my mouth correctly. It is inconsistent with both federal law and prior ATF statements. It is, because this, is, this has been an issue before and every time, you know, legally it holds up and now all of a sudden it doesn't. Substantially similar firearms continue to be sold legally as they have for years. Instead of explaining what makes the Honey Badger different from those firearms, the ATF vaguely alluded to objective design features, offering no further explanation as to what those features are or why they led the ATF to determine that the Honey Badger is an SBR. This is far from the first time that the ATF has issued a declaration that turns innocent people into criminals. Other examples abound, as I explained, felony by fiat. So, there you go. As Reasons Jacob Solom noted, the ATF's regulatory move made owners of bump stock type devices felons subject to a maximum pen penalty of 10 years in federal prison and a $250,000 fine. This is interesting. That's a very interesting turn to take, especially right now, because more people than ever are starting to go out and buy guns, right? And uh, I mean, this is a very pop, this is crazy because there's, there's some people, um, both on the internet and real life that, you know, this happens and now they've got, they've possibly got a problem, right? So what's what's next? Uh, if they could go and do this, what's next? And the, I, I had the same question with the bump stocks. It's amazing that you could get 10 years in prison for having an accessory. Right? It's not even the gun. It's, it's an accessory. Very, very interesting. I kind of want to know your guys' opinions on this. Um, do not say if you do or don't have one. I don't care. Um, just keep that shit zipped. And, uh... Yeah, by me just saying that, you should know my feelings on it. Um, so, Lockdown 2.0. It's moving forward. It's moving forward. And while, while everyone's so concerned about who's going to be the next selected president, this is moving forward. New lockdowns and restrictions sweep across the country as the scandemic continues to rise scam 
the wave of infection sweeping across the United States was followed Monday by a spate, by a spate of new lockdowns and calls to reimpose restrictions after a week with more than a million new cases that were reported. With two promising vaccines, oh yeah, these vaccines, still months away from the start of widespread distribution and President Trump slowing the transition by refusing to concede his apparent election loss to Joe, selection, not election, mayors and governors were battening down the hatches and not counting on guidance from Washington. Guys, I don't care to read this whole thing. We're all somewhere else. Most of you are probably dealing with some kind of new lockdown. Um, you know what I say to that? F it. I was so serious. If you if you want to go shopping and kind of have a stand your ground sort of movement to this kind of stuff, I say that you need to get about five to ten people. If you can get bigger than that, great. Start... Um, Kind of flash mob style shopping or going out to a restaurant. I don't care what it is. And if you need to video it, go ahead and video it. Because there's probably going to be some kind of confrontation. Um, go shopping in groups without the masks. If you want to go out to a restaurant or go do something that's somewhat normal, go do this in groups with people that are like-minded to you. You don't have to agree on everything, such as politics and everything else in the world. But if you can stand together on this issue... That's all you need to be focused on. Right now, this is the thing that is glaring us in the face. It does not matter what your stance is on basically anything else. This agenda is moving forward. If someone wants to help me kind of push back against this agenda, I don't care about anything else. That's all I care about is you stand with me to push back against this. You know, if we can get this out of the way, then you can go back to your arguing over meaningless things, but... I just, I don't like it. Biden continues to warn of a very dark winter while stressing need for coronavirus relief. President-elect Joe Biden issued an urgent plea Monday for Democrats and Republicans on Capitol Hill to set aside their policy differences and reach con conscience on coronavirus relief bill as the nation braces for a very dark winter with coronavirus infections skyrocketing. The refusal of Democrats and Republicans to cooperate with one another is not due to some mysterious force beyond our control. Oh wow, is that like taking a shot at people that know that the whole thing is effing rigged? Mr. Biden said in remarks on the economy after meeting with businesses and labor leaders. It's a conscientious, conscientious decision. It's a choice that we make. You know what else is a choice that you make? To keep living life normally. These tyrants are very, very small compared to the millions of us. They are, they are just a drop in the bucket. So what you need to do is decide that you're not going to follow these unnecessary mandates. That's what you need to do. Uh, possibly think about moving... Somewhere else. I know a lot of people don't have the funds to do that right now, but you really might want to think about moving somewhere else. I mean, this is already coming down the hatchet. It could start tomorrow. It could start two years from now. I really don't know, but it's, it's time. It really is time to start thinking about, you know, what moves are you about to make to be ready for this very dark winter. I don't like the sounds of it. I'm sure that plenty of like, you guys don't like the sounds of it. It's uh, kind of creepy. You know, it's very eerie. And many of us kind of have an understanding of what Dark Winter is. It has a lot of meanings, so I'm, I'm open to any of it, but we know about Operation Dark Winter. I'm, I'm not a big fan of where this is going, guys, and it doesn't stop unless you do something to stop it. And that doesn't mean violence. It just means showing up in numbers, you know? It sounds so silly, but do your group shopping if you need to. They can't arrest everybody, right? Make headlines, make videos. I don't care what it is. Just get your voice heard, all right? If not, this is going to go downhill much faster. So, um... I'll try my best to see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for listening. And again, if you did like this content, please leave a, leave a like. And remember that you can uh, tip on air or off. Um, it does help the channel. We're not really 
not a whole lot going on over here with YouTube suspending you and most of your stuff not being able to be monetized. Um, it would help, but if you're not in a position to help, please don't worry about it. Again, I'll try to see you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye.